In this video, I'm going to explain why it's time to buy ADP, currently down 8% year to date. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at the historical data and performance of ADP. We're going to jump in and look at their revenues progressively over the last five years, see how that's affected the bottom line, the net income, jump into their balance sheet, look at their total cash versus their total debt. We're also going to take a look at that dividend safety, take a look at the financial metrics, which I believe are very strong and warrant this to be at the very least on your watch list. And we're going to run through our stock valuation model, find out with our margin of safety, what is our acceptable buy price. Now, as always, year to date, it is down 8%. It's currently heading towards that 52 week low of $201, currently offers a yield of 2.29%. Now, for those shareholders who have held this company for the last 10 years, you would be up a nice 251% without reinvesting that dividend. So very nice so far. Now, in terms of their revenues, typically I like to see companies increasing 3 to 7% year on year for steady moderate growth. June 2018, they reported revenues of $13.3 billion. And over the last five years, June 2022, they reported 16.5. So there has been some nice increases year on year, fairly consistent as well that we can see here. And we'll take a look in more detail in our sales financial metric. Now, let's see how that's affected the bottom line, the net income. And what we can see here is in June 2018, they reported 1.88 billion worth of net income. June 2022, 2.95 so again nice increases steady year on year on that bottom line very nice to see at the moment now taking a look at their balance sheet what we can see here when we take a look at their cash versus their total debt we can see that in terms of their total cash and short-term investments june 2018 2.17 billion worth of cash in their latest quarterly report, it is slightly lower at 1.85 billion. So it has decreased, but they still have a nice sizable amount of cash in their balance sheet. Now let's take a look and see how that compares to the total debt. Now the total debt sitting here we can see is at 2 billion in 2018, and it has almost doubled in their latest quarterly report in their balance sheet at 3.4 billion. So whilst it has increased, it is sitting at 3.4 billion. And when we compare that to their total cash at 1.8, it's not that much different. And we will take a look now at the metrics to ensure they are able to pay that dividend. And in fact, they can pay off their interest and debt year on year. Dividend safety score of 97, making it very safe, almost incredible at 99 score. Market cap 90.8 billion, making a large market cap. Now, some key metrics, especially for those that believe we are heading into a recession, they have paid dividends for the last 48 years without a reduction. They're in the last recession, they did increase that dividend. So during the 0709, which is a positive sign if you believe we are heading into a recession. And the recession sales were negative 2.7%, which even though being negative was still above the average growth rate during the last recession. And again, whilst they did have a negative stock market return of 29% during that period, it still beat the S&P 500's negative 55. So one thing before we look at these percentages is they are almost a dividend king. They have been paying dividends increasing year on year for the last 48 years, meaning two more years they will become a dividend king. Last increase, huge 20% dividend increase in November 2022. Last five years, 13%. Last 20 years, 12%. As I say on every single episode repeatedly, you need 4% in your dividend increases, your other income producing assets and your salary. Otherwise, you are losing your purchasing power and getting a dividend cut because the US inflation rate over the last 40 years was 4%. So very, very nice to see from ADP. Now, dividend yield theory states that a company is undervalued when the yield is sitting above that five-year average that we can see here. So therefore, this is one sign of undervaluation of ADP. Likewise, when that forward PE is sitting below the five-year average, another sign of undervaluation. We never look at any model in isolation and we will draw our conclusion at the end of the video. Likewise, the sector PE is 17.9, so this is higher than the sector PE, so you could argue a sign of overvaluation. 
Now the 52 week price range, it is towards that 52 week low. However, this does not indicate undervaluation. Likewise, if it was sitting at the 52 week high, it would not indicate overvaluation. Earnings payout versus free cash flow payout. If you've seen my videos, you know as investors, we don't look at the earnings payout due to the susceptibility to manipulation through accounting by management. We prefer to look at the free cash flow. However, for investors that do like to use this metric, I like to see below 60% for both ratios as there is room to continually grow that double digit dividend. So below 60% it's basically been around 60% for the last 10 years. So very positive. Likewise, with the free cash flow around that 60%, with 2023 expected to be 41%. So very, very positive to see indeed. Likewise, I do prefer to look at the free cash flow per share, but I do believe they mirror the same image. 289 in 2013, 784, sorry, 701 in 2022, and 2023 is expected to increase to 874. Likewise, 2013, 278, 608 in 2022, and is expected to almost double in 2023 to 12.1. So very, very nice figures to see. Like I mentioned, 3 to 7% year on year is what we like to see. And other than 2013, where it dips negative 11%, we have seen that across the board. Very positive to see. Just under 10 billion worth of sales in 2013 and 16.5 in 2022. So nice, steady growth year on year. Very, very nice to see. Another nice thing to see, shares outstanding, companies returning excess cash to our shareholders through share buybacks. And what we can see is whilst they haven't done a lot across the period, there are small amounts year on year and it's very consistent. So I do like to see that. Return on invested capital, one of my seven golden dividend metrics. Do go check out my pinned YouTube video if you want to see why that is and the other seven golden dividend metrics. But this one is being more than 10% as it means management can effectively allocate that capital which is great news for us shareholders. So above that and quite considerably and consistently year on year with 2022 being 56%. So very, very strong and very positive. Operating margins above 12% is what we like to see. They have done well above that year on year consistently. Very nice to see. And we can also see the upward trajectory. Free cash flow margin, 5% we like to see. And we can see that again, other than 2014. Very, very nice to see. 2022 coming in at 32%. So very, very positive. Net debt to EBITDA. I was alluring to this earlier in the balance sheet review. They can effectively pay off their total debt in less than a year. Preferably we see here below three. So very positive and no issues. One with their debt and interest payments and two with that dividend which comes from this. So very positive. Likewise, this is more for illustration purposes, but point below 0.4 effectively means in 2022 it would take the company 40 sorry it took them 40 percent of their financing was from debt as opposed to equity now jumping into the stock valuation model if you are enjoying the content and value is being received do hit that like button do hit the subscribe button for continued content if you do want to grab this stock valuation model that we're about to run through do check the pinned comment where you can grab a copy and run your own companies through this model to get to your intrinsic value based on your estimates and judgments and also do check out the pinned comment to join us over on patreon now graham's valuation model let's jump in earnings per share 783 growth rate as expected by analyst estimates with the yield on AAA corporate bonds the intrinsic value comes at 153 dollars and we can see here this is below the current share price and quite below that 52 a week low Multiples valuation model, we have companies in a similar industry and sector and size. We have Paychex, Trinet, and Insperity. Once we input the stock price and EPS, we have the P multiples, of which do we get the average P multiplied by the EPS, and the stock price is $173, again, lower than the current share price. Dividend discount model, one of my favorite models to look at where we can see the increase in the dividends. We have the yearly dividends year on year. The growth rate, which the average is just under 13% during this time period, which is very, very nice to see. Now, I've gone a lot more conservatively, especially if we are heading into a recession at 6.5, but you could argue a slightly higher rate. This gives a DDM price of 355. We can see here significantly higher than the 52 week high, showing significant room for the company to grow. The final discounted cash flow model, we have the free cash flows over the last five years with an average growth rate of 5.79%. Now, based on analyst estimates, a growth rate forward looking of around 15% is justified. Using our discount rate, we get the present value of these future free cash flows 
along with that terminal value. Once we add that together with the cash and cash equivalent, subtract the total debt, we arrive at our equity value, which dividing by the shares outstanding gets a DCF price of $280, which is right there at that 52 a week high. As always, do hit that like button if you are enjoying the content and this is providing value and do hit the subscribe to continue to be notified. Now, we've just run through our four valuation models with the intrinsic value, the average coming at 240. Now, the current price, $217.91. I would personally say for a company like ADP, 10% margin of safety would be justified with a nice wide moat, with nice previous historical data that we've just run through and very nice forward guidance. So margin of safety at around 10% would mean it's a buy around $260, which is just a dollar off the current price. So you could argue current price is a buy. If you wanted a higher margin of safety around 20%, you would be looking to buy around $192. And we can see this is very slightly below that 52 a week low. As always, do let me know your thoughts in the comments if you are a shareholder looking to buy or if you are also someone on the sidelines waiting for a particular price or just get in the comments and we can have a discussion on ADP. So analysts are expecting some upside to the current share price at $235 within the next 12 months. As always, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Hope you have a lovely day and catch you on the next episode. Take care.